Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Don Kingsborough, VP of Global Retail at PayPal. Hey, I do need a clicker. <laughs> We'll just wait one second. Love that music, though, talking about money here in uh, Las Vegas. And the only thing I know about Las Vegas is when I come, uh, typically I, Sorry thank you. That. When I come to Las Vegas, typically I leave with less money than I came from. You know, today I'm going to begin talking about the history of starting great companies. And the reason I'm doing this because later in the presentation, I'm going to talk to you about two products that we just announced in the last two or three weeks. And today, we're going to announce a global announcement of a brand new product that we're going to launch beginning today. When I was president of Atari, the idea of bouncing two balls between two rectangles on a screen seemed very crazy at that time. I had people tell me no one would ever sit in front of your TV set, attach an electronic game to it, and play it. Because you have to remember at that time, there were fully three TV stations, ABC, NBC, and CBS. And who needed more than three TV stations? Long time ago, but believe me, when I was president of this company and the first time we went out to sell this, I had great apprehensions. But Pong took off, and very quickly, millions of consumers purchased and played Pong, and Atari, luckily, defined the electronics game industry for decades. And as you can see by this video, from those early days of two little paddles and one little ball bouncing between these two paddles that seemed so exciting then, in just a few short years, we've come to games like this Grand Theft Auto V that in just three days sold over $1 billion. The next company I started are teddy bears have been around for a long time, or at least when Teddy Roosevelt, I guess, gave it its name. And children had been talking and imagining, uh, imagining talking with their teddy bear. But teddy bears at that time never talked back. But when I started Worlds of Wonder, no one thought that teddy bears could talk. But I did. I knew that Teddy Ruxpin would become a talking friend to millions of children around the world. Show and tell time. Hi, I'm a teddy bear. My teddy's name is Teddy Ruxpin. He talks, he tells stories, he... Fall battle is not included. Hi, my name is Teddy Ruxpin. Can you and I be friends? Yeah. I really enjoy talking to people. I would like to... Teddy Ruxpin, the storytelling bear, comes with illustrated book and cassette from Worlds of Wonder. And I know there's some of my friends here today who were with me when I started Black Hawk Networks now 13 or 14 years ago. And I had this idea that people could use plastic as gifting money instead of paper certificates. If you remember those, many, reader, many retailers, when I went to them to talk about moving to plastic, 
told me there wasn't anything wrong with paper gift certificates and that plastic cards that no one was going to send to their mother or their grandmother a plastic gift card as opposed to a beautiful certificate that you could write out, put in a nice card, and send to your mother or grandmother or friends. At that time, you had to go to the specific store you wanted the written gift certificate, and the clerk filled out the gift certificate in great writing and recorded all the information in a book for tracking. And if you wanted to get multiple gift certificates, you had to go to multiple stores. Fast forward just a couple of years after I founded Black Hawk, and this is the way in which consumers buy gift uh, certificates today. It is more into a rack offering that most major retailers now carry. And every kind of gift card is available for all types of retailers, restaurants, large retailers, service, entertainment, any kind of gift card that you can think goes on these racks. And today, with the help of those great people who worked with me at Blackhawk, We've created a $120, $120 million business in selling gift cards. And what this makes me, what re always reminds me of, is how things that once seemed so far-fetched, Atari, Pong, Teddy Ruxpin, paper gift certificates, how often that the things like that get so ubiquitous that they become part of everyone's daily life, and no one gives it a second thought five years or 10 years later. I was watching a rerun. I got a cold, and so I was sitting in bed one night, and I was watching a rerun the other day. Take a look at this. It's, it's an eye-opening scene from a movie called Minority Reports. You know, this movie was made in 2002, and it portrayed a version of life that was supposed to occur in 2054. At that time, 52, late, 52 years into the future. When this movie was released, many people thought that these scenes in the movie were just unbelievable, unrealistic, couldn't happen. But part of this fictional technology shown in this movie is going to become a welcome reality here and now. Today, I'm going to show you what is going to affect you, and listen to this, in the next few months. Not 52 years, not two years, but the next few months. The future is actually now, and we are making what was once science fiction a reality. I joined PayPal three years ago, and people were skeptical about anyone's ability to deliver the idea of omnichannel. Lots of people were thinking and speculating about how to do this. And to be candid, three years ago, I, brought, I wrote a business plan, and we have been on that same business plan, that same course. We have not changed it since I first wrote it. Quietly, we have been thinking about Omnichannel and continue to make slight changes in our strategy. We thought about Omnichannel and about what it would take to fuel the wave of change necessary to make it a reality. We thought about the form factor. 
about how important partnering uh, is to, to this solution. We thought about the technology, but mostly I thought about how does this actually work in retail stores, and most importantly, what do I have to do to get the consumers to adopt and to use these solutions in their everyday life? Last year at this time, in fact at the same conference, Google got up to make a bunch of changes in, in their strategy. And they didn't quite make it when they got on stage because things had occurred earlier that morning. And Omnichannel has been changed by many of our competitors over the last two years from NFC to cloud. And lately, they're changing their strategy again. But we have stayed the course. We have had a plan. And that plan has been working for us. We thought about connected commerce and what was, the, what was it going to really mean. Several companies have the ability to build out the building blocks for Omnichannel. But it's not about the ability. It's about putting these things together in a way that's easy for the retailer to adopt. It's about the consumer, about doing it in a way that they already know how to do the things that we're going to ask them. That's what actually creates connected commerce, because if the consumer doesn't use it, whether it's connected or not, makes no difference. What we realized is that consumers are driving connected commerce. Because it's up to the consumer on how, when, and why they shop. To us, it's about connected commerce. But to the consumer, it's simply about shopping and buying. So with partners, with new technology, and with the innovative vision that we had three years ago, we we're building out new ways for merchants to engage with the consumer in more personalized, seamless, and most importantly, uninterrupted ways. A year ago at this conference, competitors were talking about what it was going to take to reach consumers in an omni-channel way, or how they needed to change how the consumer to, sh to shop to be more omni-channel centric. And to be honest, there have been dozens of players that have made announcements. Various players have talked about how they're going to roll out omni-channel and they focus on two cities, or only restaurants, or another two cities. And they think that is what is going to change the consumer behavior, that that's what's going to integrate into their life. What I know, and the most important thing, the subtle thing that I'm going to tell you today, listen carefully. What we know is Consumers don't give a damn about where your payment method is available. That you have to be only wherever the consumer actually already loves to shop. To me, this is a foundational issue that gets lost in the press, that even gets lost in some of the meetings I'm in uh, with retailers and, and other partners. That the foundational issue that for technology to work, to live and thrive, since we're in Vegas, these are the table stakes for success. You have to be where the cons consumers already love to shop, period. And with that thinking, we just didn't roll out and test in two cities in a few restaurants are in one region, 
Today, we are a nationwide and global distributed product across a diverse group of merchants. You have to be everywhere consumer shop. Service providers, restaurants, and mainly large merchants. 150 merchants in the US does almost half of $3.3 trillion. And if you are not in those 150 merchants, the chance to integrate in the life of the consumer is non-existent. You have to be where the consumer already shops. So how did we do this? You first need partnerships that will help you drive consumer adoption. This is the way in which you get to market efficiently and now. You need to work with partners who are strong at what they do. You need to work with partners who have similar goals and aspirations that you have. You need to work with partners who are providing the infrastructure retailers already have. We believe that we don't actually need new infrastructure. We believe you need to make the infrastructure smarter and fatter. So PayPal has worked with numerous key partners to make this happen. And we've opened up our APIs to thousands of app developers. And this is critical because we know that not all innovation can come from one company and that app developers will play a very critical role in the future of POS and retail experiences. Interesting, I've showed this slide a couple of times. Always hard for my mind to grasp it. But there are more iPhones sold than there are babies born in the world. And that doesn't include, and an iPhone only has a small percentage of the market. And that doesn't include Android, Blackberries, Nokias, or any other type of smartphone. But my point really isn't for consumer adoption that it's not just that there are so many smartphones, it's that these phones now have become fully integrated into the life of a consumer. Every one of you in this room has one, and almost 70% of all spend that comes on um, mobile comes from an iPhone or an Apple product. And there are apps for every need and every purpose. Each of us bought an iPhone, and yet our individual iPhones are different than everyone sitting next to you. And what this has allowed is mobile to become integrated into the daily lives of, of the consumer. And that's what makes mobile the platform for shopping and buying. Mobile is creating a shift in consumer expectations in how, where, when the consumer shops and pays. This is the heart of what I'm gonna tell you about now, this next little section. The next three new products are a payoff of three years worth of work, of getting the distribution out where we're in millions of locations, of getting the technology on the POS, of enabling the capabilities that we have all launched in a very short three-week period. Today, I want you to pay close attention because this is what is going to get the consumer to adopt and use digital payments. You may have heard that we recently launched a new app. We've taken all of our learnings over the last three years about consumers and about retail omni-channel, and we created a brand new simple interface for the consumer. The way to surface merchants, 
that are close to a consumer's location. And a way to deliver targeted offers and attract consumers, uh, consumers using what they're most interested in. And what the consumers really love is a way to order ahead and pick up and skip lines, both in restaurants and other retailers. This is the, is the critical interface that allows consumers to do the things that they want, that they love, that either saves them time or money. We brought mobile phones, technology, digital wallets, and partnerships that enable this at retail to give you great payment experience that everyone can use. And in millions of locations, not one or two cities, and not just in the United States. The announcement I'm making today is a global announcement. The last three announcements, the app, what I'm going to tell you about next, and the brand new product are all getting announced globally. And most importantly, you have to have trust and simplicity for the consumer to use it. You may have heard last week, or a little over a week ago, we announced a brand new pro product that we call PayPal Beacon. You see a picture of it up on the screen. We're now making shopping on a mobile phone and expanding that experience to begin as soon as someone enters a retail's physical location. With the app, we start, they can be at home, on a soccer field, we can start there. At the top of the app, you have the ability to get offers and discounts and those kinds of things. And then as you get closer, the app tells you about the favorite places you shop and buy and about discounts and time-saving things as you get in proximity to this. Beacon now moves proximity shopping into the store. And you can do this all with one application. With PayPal Beacon, merchants can offer innovative convenience and curated proximity offers automatically delivered to the consumer as they enter the physical store. Consumers can automatically check in and receive curated offers to guide their shopping experience. We now have closed this loop from distance, from home, to proximity, and now inside the store. Today, for the first time, and you'll see coverage. I've done all kinds of interviews yesterday, Friday, and this afternoon. You'll see coverage on all the major news networks about this. You'll see it in the journal. You'll see it on CNN. Today, I'm excited to announce a brand new product to the world. It's called PayPal Payment Code. With Payment Code, consumers can have an endless, seamless, end-to-end -end shopping experience that offers purchase simply, easily, and for the consumer, safely. Payment code works very similar to that barcode application that many of you use every day when you walk into the well-known coffee house that you get your coffee every morning. The subtlety here and the thing that you should take away from this is the beauty of this, unlike most new products, is most people already know how to use this. It is something that they can easily adopt. When we do surveys, what the consumer says, oh, that's like I do at the Starbucks, only you're gonna, I can do it now everywhere. That's what I do when I go to the airport and I check in. And now I can do it at every retailer. We've taken that same experience and we're making it available to retailers around the world. Now let me show you a brief demonstration of how 
PayPal payment code works. And because we know that not all merchants have 2T barcode scanners, there are 40 million pen pads in the world. And because we know you can't change the infrastructure, you simply have to make it better. When you walk into a store that has a pen pad, you get a dynamic pin number that's good for only one trans transaction and you simply type four numbers into the pen pad or the clerk can punch the four numbers in for you into the POS system. It's the simplicity. It's the fact that it can be in every retailer immediately and it's the fact that the consumer already knows how to do this that's the power. Do not leave this room thinking that this isn't forever going to change the way consumers shop. It is. In fact, through our partnership with Discover, remember a year and a half ago we did a deal with Discover that allows us the connectivity to the 7 million and over 20 million locations they're connected to around the world. And so, every merchant that is connected to Discover will be enabled to take payment code beginning in January of 2014. Or we are connected to tens of thousands of retailers and that will grow and everyone who's connected to us directly will also be able to do payment code and beacon right away. Remember the Minority Report video that I saw on TV recently? The future is now. It's time to make Omnichannel integrated into the lives of consumers around the world. You don't have to wait 50 years like in the movie to see the ideas materialize. PayPal has the innovation. And we know what it takes to be successful. The future is in our hands, yours and mine. And our story will be guided by 132 global customers who have already chosen PayPal, PayPal as their preference. But before I leave, let me show you what not 52 years from now looks like, let me show you what the beginning of 2014 looks like. Sometimes it feels like you're running all day long. And sometimes it's nice to have some help with the little things along the way. The PayPal app with hands-free check-in to pay is designed to help manage the little things so they don't get in your way. It lets you set your preferences so you can automatically check in and pay with PayPal on your mobile device at businesses that you choose. No wallet or cash required. Because the little things can add up when you're on the go. PayPal app seamlessly connects with the PayPal Beacon, a state-of-the-art low-energy Bluetooth device in your favorite stores that helps you get what you want when you want it. The PayPal app and PayPal Beacon, making hands-free payments a reality. Here's to the little things. Listen, I hope you enjoy what we see the future to be now. We want to partner with many of you. If you're a retailer, acquirer, a software developer, please come to our booth and ask us questions and talk about how we can work together. We're in booth 501. We appreciate you listening to this and thank you very much for your time.
Thank you, Don.